Thor number one, the Downey Cates book, is the talk of the market right now. Um, advanced PDFs went out to retailers. And immediately I started seeing, again, I, I'm the social media guy. Um, I ran social media um, for the previous site that we worked with. Um, I'm heavily involved in what Brian and I are trying to do on social media for Simplements Comics. And I, one of the contacts that I try to make is with a lot of retailers and a lot of retailers started posting immediately on Twitter about how amazing Thor number one is. Um, the buzz is incredible. And the beauty is it's not like we talked about Venom number 20 on the uh, um, the uh, Bolo show. It's not buzz coming from Donny Cates now. It's buzz coming from people about Donny Cates. But in this process, apparently a store retailer has put a copy of the PDF on one of these like PDF viewing sites Um for access, open access, essentially pirating the issue after FOC, and he left his code that they each have like a like a code on the back. I'm an account or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and you and I get uh, every now and again from publishers, mostly independent publishers. Full disclosure, we'll get um, you know a P- advanced PDFs, and that's something I'm always cognitive of is not sharing that with anybody because it, you know, they'll, they'll be like the signature when you sign on. Well, type and thing. You, you betray someone's, tr- you betray someone's trust. When you right. And those relationships are invaluable, right? The relationships you make in the marketplace. Um, you can't get that back once you burn that bridge. And Donnie was rightfully very upset about this. Um, and this has been a whole saga on Twitter. So to, to give you the long and short of it, well, this, very... this ties into more also because before, right before this happened, there was the whole. There's a bunch of stuff going on Twitter between creators about the piracy of books before this as well, like people reading on the sites, yeah, books without buying copies. So to see this on top of the conversation that's been going on 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 Twitter, kind of adds to the frustration, I'm sure, on the on the part of the creators. Yeah, and especially like Donnie has was very strong stance of anti piracy. So this could have been done. Um, this could have been done despite him because he took such a hard stance. Um, it could have been done. The truth is, retailers have been doing this for a long time. They've been doing this to manipulate the market. And then there were reports that this actually came from a speculation group. Now I don't want to say speculation group because at the end of the day, it's one person who did it. Um, so apparently, th- this came. This was it from a speculation group. Donnie has since put tweets up saying that. It was a battle between two speculation groups, and and he doesn't think that it was like malicious or even real. The reality is, though, there have been screenshots posted about the discussion about it, where someone admitted to it and took uh, the fall for it um, through like I don't know if it was text or Facebook Messenger. Either way, it's a messy situation, and it's part of why Brian, I really love that you and I are removed from that entire um, speculation group kind of community because we've both been in speculation uh group chats and groups where some of it's very public and some of it's very private and you don't really know what goes on in a lot of these groups and you can be insulated in your group and then there's other groups and what's going on there and the bottom line is the relationship between retailer publisher um writer these these are sacred relationships and they really shouldn't be violated we talked about this when we had the recalled comics at DC Comics, um, I understand why Donnie Cates was so upset about this situation. Um, I hope that he's right and this was just some fake news thing, but I don't think it was. Um, and I got to be honest with you, my BS detector feels like it's really questionable that this happened after FOC. Um, we... We caught a lot of flack for doing this show when we initially came up with the concept of the show. And I think we've shown our core audience that we've done this show to try to help and educate and bring attention to the FOC process and how it can work for you as a collector. And then how that also benefits the industry as a whole. Um, what the people who don't like us doing this, they want information kept to themselves till after that date. And then the idea that they could possibly then release that information after the fact and do more than we're doing. We're just talking about books we like and our opinions on them. 
this was an entire book available to read to build hype, and now you can't go back and order it FOC. So no matter how many copies you went and ordered after you read that, because the argument's going to be, well, speculators get hype on it, they go buy a bunch of copies. It's true, but they buy a bunch of copies that were already ordered. They're not buying new copies. They're not increasing the print run, which, yes, a speculator's going to turn around and go, that's the point. But that doesn't help Tony Cates, the guy who wrote that book, created that book, has waited his entire life to get to write Thor number one. Um, I just think ethics have to come into play, Brian. And it's unfortunate to see that this kind of thing happening within the hobby um, and this kind of manipulation. And the idea that this could affect how Marvel or any other publisher handles advanced PDFs is disappointing because we know that we rely on them to be able to accurately – a lot of times report and talk about books um, to be able to do the shows and the content that we do um, and to be able to, you know, help get the word out about certain books. So um, it's a, it's an unfor- whole unfortunate story to take a place, especially on Thanksgiving. It's one of those things that you see from the outside looking in. So you don't know all the details or everything. So yeah, on, on the face of what we know, yeah, it's disheartening. It's kind of, you hate to see something like that happen in the hobby, but it's gonna it's it's gonna happen if not this person, someone else to do it. I don't agree with it, but I think also that I'll, if that diamond code or whatever is out there was on there, I hope you know whatever happens between diamond and that publisher, whoever shared it, it gets taken care of, and that's like the right thing to do. There's nothing we can sit here and disagree with it, but yeah. I think it's wrong. That's kind of why we pivoted away from it, just because it's like, hey, I want to get back to why we like comics, why we like reading comics, what's great about the stories, what's great about the creators, what's great about the publishers. Yes, there's some tangible, uh, natural tangible, where there's going to be some value market investing talk within our conversations. But this right here is the main reason why we have decided to kind of pull back from that and talk more about the hobby in general. Right. And then if you hear us talk passionately about how excited we are about like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 101 and how we uh, have high expectations for that issue, doesn't mean we're necessarily going to be right. But if you then decide that you want to invest in that book, by all means, more all power to you. But we're not your comics broker. We don't want to play that role. We we're in this because we love it. We wouldn't spend the time doing it if we didn't love it. Um, and we have enjoyed getting back to the core of what we kind of got into comics in the first place for. So I will say there was a part of me, Brian, while all of this saga was playing out on social media that I said, I feel really good that this has nothing that I have to even really be concerned about. I can kind of be a spectator from the outside and, and watch it all. And like you said, we don't know all the details. It's really, it's really an unfortunate mess. I think something happened. I I don't, I don't think it's a hoax. Something happened. Um, and I do hope it gets cleaned up. I will tell you, Brian, I don't have a lot of faith in Diamond cleaning it up because Diamond stands to profit. And they don't cut accounts off very easily. Um, Marvel will need to get involved for anything to happen. Marvel will have to put the pressure on Diamond. So we'll see if that happens. We'll see if we ever even honestly get resolution publicly to this. This could be handled privately and none of us could ever um, could ever even find out. But – you know, it is what it is. Let us know in the comment section what you guys think for sure. About yeah, if you're even aware of it, or if, if, if um, I mean, sure, if you follow Donnie Cates on Twitter, you're you're aware of it, and the, there's been other conversations going on. Um, we just thought, yeah, it was something to discuss. Find out what the you, you the viewer thought of this as well. Yeah, and absolutely no disrespect to anybody involved or accused, or you know, that's why we, yep. you know. It's net, we're not accusing anyone ourselves. Um, you know, we were we were very aware of all the things that have been talked about on social media. But you know, for us, the topic is topical, and it plays it's into this FOC, and it it a lot of it factors into a lot of the talk that surrounds FOC and in the whole process. Um, and it's it, there is a part of the hobby that the average you know collector doesn't get to see. Um, and I you know I felt like this was kind of a blessing that we had a small week this week that we could kind of talk about all these other events that play into FOC. So there's the last call and my last word. I'm still excited to pick up Thor number one because we talked about it on last call last week. Yes. And I am too.